Hello, and welcome to today's module on the theorem of Pappus Goldinus. What we'd like to do is we'd like to start off by taking a look at a torus. I'm sure many of you have seen this shape, but for uh, those of you who haven't really looked at it all that carefully, what we have is a, um, right here we have an axis of rotation coming up this way, and we'll call that the y-axis. And then we also have the horizontal axis, we'll call that the x-axis, obviously. And uh, what we're doing is we're taking a circle and we're rotating that circle about the, the y-axis. Here's what would happen if we took a cross section. Basically, this would be like the x-y plane over here. We'd have a circle with a center right here. And this circle is being is being rotated all the way around a torus. And I'd like to take just a moment to wrap my head around this concept, and then we'll use this as a springboard to understand the theorems of Pappus, uh, the theorem of Pappus Goldinus. Now, just to keep this in mind, Pappus was third century Greek. I mean, way back thousands of years ago. And Goldinus was, uh, I believe, a 16th century, he was, he was Swiss, and he kind of brought this back into fashion. And their theory goes like this. We can imagine we have a circle. And let's imagine that the length of that circle, we'll call it L. I don't know what it is. We'll, we'll take a look at it more carefully. And we're going to rotate that circle around this dashed line. And that dashed line, in fact, is the distance that the centroid travels around the y-axis. And if we do that, if we multiply L here, let, let's do, let's label these. L is uh, this basically it's the circumference of this circle. And D is the circumference of this circle. We multiply those two together and we get the area of the torus. Well, let's look at what this, and this is his first um, theorem. Let's take a look at what that means in this case. Well, um, for the area, of our surface that's being resolved right here. Let's say it has a um, lowercase r. So in that case, L is 2 pi r. And let's imagine now, now the next question is where is the centroid of the circle? Well, the centroid of the circle is in the middle. So this is an easy one. What we do is we identify another distance. Let's give this a different color just so we're uh, clear. Do we try and keep these clear? We'll call this big R. And that means that D, the distance that the centroid covers, is 2, whoops, 2 pi big R. That means that the area of a torus is 2 pi small r this distance times the area or the distance that the centroid covers as it revolves around the axis. And if you really want the answer, and I kind of want the answer, it's 2 pi r squared, large case r. Now the cool thing about this is we could have changed the rules. We could have said, well, instead of a circle, let's Let's take a, uh, I don't know, a triangle cross section and rotate it around this axis of rotation. No problem. Find out the distance of um, each side of the triangle. Find out where the centroid is, and you can do that. Multiply them, the distance the centroid travels by the overall length of the uh, shape that's being rotated. You have your area of the torus. Now, Let's 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 get that off so it's not cluttering things up. Goldinus or that this theorem doesn't stop there. What they also look at is what happens if you take instead of taking the length of this shape, rotating it about the torus, we're going to take the area of this shape and rotate it. Or, I'm sorry, rotating about the axis. We're going to take the area of the shape 
We're going to multiply it by the distance the centroid travels. And now we're going to get the volume of the shape. And in this case, it's the volume of the torus. So let's go ahead and try and figure this out. Well, the area is going to be the area of the small circle. That's simply going to be pi r squared. And the distance it travels, same distance. So big D is the same. 2 pi large r. If we want to know the volume, we know that it is pi r squared times 2 pi r. Now my computer's slowing down, it seems. So we get 2 pi squared r squared r is the volume. And for those of you who are paying attention, here if we're looking for area, we should get square, or we should get like square feet. And here, radius times a radius is a square foot or a square meter, a square inch, whatever it is. And same here, we have a cubic of the distance, which is what you should have if you, or the, cu the distance cubed, which is what you should have if you're at getting a volume. So we can use these, um, this theorem to help us when we start getting some really funky shapes. Now, that said, what I'd like to do is show you one way that we often use it. Um, that's that I think is pretty neat. Now, sometimes you have a shape and that shape is being uh, revolved. Like, you know, like let's let's we'll have a y axis here. OK, and an x axis here. And we're going to have a shape. Let's make it a semicircle. OK, and that semicircle is going to be revolved around the x axis. So you're going to end up with a sphere. Now, of course, I'm doing this because it's a game and it kind of makes it easy. But you can imagine that you can revolve all sorts of things about an axis. And using the theorems of Pappus Goldinus allow you to find volumes, allow you to find areas. And in our case, we're going to actually find out where is the centroid. So let's imagine, this is kind of like our game. We're going to revolve this semicircle around the x-axis. Now, we already know what the answer is. So let's say, let's say we're going to figure out what the uh, volume is, OK? We already know that the volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. And the reason we're doing this is because I want to know where the centroid is. Let's say I don't know where the centroid is on a semicircle, but I do know that if I revolve um, this semicircle around the x-axis, I get a volume of 4 thirds pi r cubed. Well, we know that the theorem of Pappus Guldinus says that the volume is the area times the distance the centroid travels. Well, let's work with that. The area of this shape is pi r squared, and where, uh, I'm sorry, pi r squared over 2 because we're only looking at half the circle. And uh, that's assuming, of course, that we'll draw in this. There's our radius. And we're going to multiply it by the distance the centroid travels. Well, we do not know where the centroid is. It's, um, it's at some y coordinate, right? We don't know what it is. So we'll just make it a variable. We'll say 2 pi, y, and a lot of times when you see this bar over the y or over the x, that's saying what is the, um, the position of the centroid in that direction. So we also, so we know that 2 pi times whatever the centroid distance is, that's going to get us our answer. Well, fortunately, we know what the answer is. We know that the answer is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the only thing we have to do is to solve for y. OK, we're going to have a 2 here and a 2 here. We're going to have a pi over here. And this pi, they're going to factor out, uh, or they're going to drop out. We're going to have an r squared on this side. That r cubed is going to go just to an r. All right. And let's see what we have left. We have a y over here and a pi. So and over here. We're going to end up with 4r over 
pi. So that tells us that the location of the centroid is 4r over 3 pi. And you can kind of imagine that feels right, right? So pi is about 3, so 4 ninths. You're just under halfway. That kind of makes sense. Gives you a little bit of a feel of the types of problems that you might encounter using the theorem of Pappus-Guldinus. Thanks for listening and good luck.